welcome to today's video where as you may have guessed from the title i will be talking about how i grew my hair with the japanese straight perm length retention tips for your new growth and other important things i have two videos on how i grew my hair with the japanese straight perm one is just a general video one is products that i've used those two videos are okay but after re-watching them i realized i didn't really answer a lot of the questions that may come up so in today's video, I will be detailing more helpful, more concrete advice on what you can do to retain your length, deal with the difference in your hair textures, etc, etc. Another thing is, I wanted to know, would any of you be interested in like a pros and cons video on like, oh, what to know before doing the Japanese straight perm? If you'd like that sort of video focusing on Japanese hair straightening, please let me know down below and I can incorporate that into a future video so i want to say the most important thing is that you do proper research prior to this process proper research whether you're going the diy route or whether you're going the professional route is so crucial obviously if you're going to a professional you need to know where they got their training from how many months years of experience they have if they have experience in hair with your specific texture how successful it's been client testimonials you need to know all of this outside of just looking at the pricing because i understand that the pricing for the japanese straight permanent salons is very expensive some salons start around 300 dollars many go way upwards of that and of course if you're investing that sort of money it may be tempting to choose the more affordable option but honestly speaking, the most affordable option is not always the best option. And you wanna make sure that that person that's going to be touching your hair is reputable. So do all the research you can prior to talking to that person. Obviously you need to book a consultation and see how comfortable you feel with them. And before a consultation, I would have a few non-Japanese straight perm related hair treatments with that person. When I still had my stylist here in white, I saw that that was a service that was offered and I was so grateful that it was just $250 including a hair trim. But I was only willing to do that service. After meeting my stylist a few times and getting a separate haircut, getting a separate head spa, things of that nature. At that point, I had built a relationship with that stylist where I felt comfortable having them do my hair. And that's when I was willing to invest that money. On the other hand, if you're going the DIY route, while it can be very attractive to see a video, for example, this video or any of my other videos and just take it at face value, I'd still recommend that you do your research because I was watching other YouTubers that did this to their hair and all of them had different levels of reliability to be perfectly honest and even to this day some of them have given out advice that's very contradictory and if i had listened to that i would not have been able to retain the length that i've been able to retain my suggestion is that you see a primary source video not just these secondary tertiary source videos so i watched the Shiseido Professionals video on how to do this process. And from that, I incorporated other helpful information like people who went and had this at the salon or people that offered this at the salon, looking at their videos on this and getting the understanding of what it is that I need to do with my hair. So I will, of course, link down the Shiseido Professionals video on how to go about this process because it is imperative that if you're going to do this yourself, you know what you're doing. And I also would not suggest you doing this if you are if you don't have any experience doing your hair by yourself, period. But I'm at a point where I feel confident doing it. And as I've done it over time, I've improved in being able to do it for myself. If you know that that's not realistic for you, that's when you go the professional route or you consider something else entirely for your hair. Another important thing outside of researching the Japanese straight perm explicitly is having an understanding of your own hair. So having experimented enough, you 
feel comfortable doing anything to your hair in general, then you should know what your hair likes and what your hair doesn't like. This is not necessarily where knowing the hair type is important, but it is important to know your hair's porosity. To know if the porosity is because of what you've done to your hair or if that's your natural porosity. I mean this to say my hair is naturally low porosity. So that means my hair is more resistant to chemical processes, heat damage, and even moisturization. When I know that, then I know what kind of products that I need to use. I know when my hair is beyond the point of repair and other things of that nature. If your hair is naturally high porosity, then you also need to know your limits versus if your hair was made high porosity because of the damage that is sustained from using too much heat, using too much manipulation, using too many chemicals. From knowing that my hair is a lower porosity, I know that with something like a relaxer or with something like a Japanese straight perm, I can use a normal to strong strength. But if your hair is very high porosity, whether that's too damage or etc., either you need to use the mildest possible version or you need to forego chemicals altogether and heal your hair into a point where it can take any kind of chemical. So that's gonna get into our next step, which is know where your hair is and know where you want your hair to be. We need to have a hair assessment. When I first started the Japanese straight perm, I had relaxed hair. So I knew that my main goal was to transition from relaxed hair to Japanese straight hair. Because I had two honestly conflicting chemicals, I was fully willing and able to have to cut all my hair off and start over. Luckily, because my hair is more low porosity, I didn't have to do that. Everybody's not that fortunate. You see the videos where people are crying because they used bleach and relaxer and their hair fell out. You see the videos where people talk about they just tried a new hair color and suddenly their hair is green and it's permanent. There's all kinds of hair disaster videos. The question is, when you do reach that disastrous state or prior to reaching that disaster state, what is your hair like? Do you know what your hair is like? Do you know the characteristics of your hair? And do you know what it is that you want to achieve? So when I knew that my hair was damaged and I wanted to grow longer, healthier hair, I already knew that I would need more trends, I would need more deep conditioning, I would need more tender loving care, and I would need less manipulation. So that was my initial goal, to manipulate my hair as little as possible, to grow it as long as possible through trimming and pretty much babying it as much as possible. For the first few months of my hair journey, that was the priority. Grow my hair out, get a trim. Grow my hair out, get a trim. Now I'm at a point where my hair is generally healthy. I very rarely get breakage. And when I do, I know that it's more than likely the last of the relaxed hair breaking off. In general, my hair is long from root to tip. Now I'm not trimming as often, but you still have to trim. When your hair is in a damaged state and you don't wanna do a big chop, or you just recently did a big chop, but you know there's more hair that needs to go, that's when you do more generous trims. That's when you take two or three inches off at a time. Right now, I'm at a point where my hair is generally healthy and I have no problems. I wouldn't take more than half an inch or a fourth an inch off now. So it's the difference between cutting slash trimming and dusting. I'm at a dusting stage because my hair is generally how I like it to be. And I also do search and destroy, which is where you look at the ends of your hair. And if you see a split in, you trim that in, that split, just before the split. And you don't trim any other hair. From knowing that my hair is low porosity, that my hair was damaged, and knowing that I wanted to grow longer, healthier hair, that was the priority, that was the focus. We're going to get into step number three, which is knowing the difference between your new growth and your chemically treated hair. The point is generally that the hair that's growing out, the virgin hair, the untreated hair, the raw hair is hair that has a different need than the hair that has been treated. Right now, I'm a few weeks post touch up and I'm waiting until next month, August, before I touch up again. In the meantime, I'm at a point where I can still just wash my hair 
and blow dry it on low to no heat lash letting it air dry through doing this i'm achieving my hair goal of not using a lot of heat but also retaining as much length as possible and also i'm doing more curly styles or braided styles that way i'm not manipulating my hair a lot it's important for me to stretch out the roots when they need to be stretched out and also make sure that they're not getting dry and things of that nature on the other hand because his hair at the ends that has been treated has been chemically treated i have to prioritize not only moisturizing but also damage repair or strengthening so i would want to focus protein based treatments more so on my ends than i would on my roots so when you have a relaxer what happens is the sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide strips a bond from your hair so your hair is missing a bond which causes it to be weak that weakness is what leads to straightness as you have relaxed hair and it gets longer and longer your hair needs more protein with an ammonium thioglycolate based process like the japanese straight perm your hair is essentially made into jelly so the bonds are made kind of wiggly and then you shape it into the shape you want in this case straight in other cases, you can do a curly perm, so whatever tool to make it curl. Hydrogen peroxide is added to set that shape. This hair is dry in a different way. So either way, your hair is dry, but it's for different reasons. I still need protein, but not as much protein as somebody with a traditional relaxer. My emphasis is actually on moisturizing, because if anybody who's ever had a jerry curl, a wave nouveau, any kind of permanent curler wave knows your hair is chronically dry because it needs moisture. It really likes humectants and things of that nature. The thing is with a straight perm, if I use too many humectants, my hair can either fluff up a little bit, so frizz, or if I curled it and I use too many humectants, it will make itself straight again. In order to take care of both types of my hair, my focus is during wash day every once a week doing as much as possible to ensure for the rest of the week i don't have to do much to moisturize or reshape and restyle my hair so from wash day beginning to end i'm focusing on moisture root to tip and protein products are okay but in moderation for my type of hair just have to be able to respond to the unique needs for all your hair types Especially as my new growth grows in, as I mentioned before, that's when I focus more so on stretching out my hair as much as possible. That's when I may reincorporate heat styling or if it's been enough weeks, I go ahead and touch up my hair. I want to get into the next step, which is step four, knowing when to retouch your hair. I personally prefer to retouch my hair every eight to 10 weeks. I used to go 12 to 15 weeks, but I was not retaining the most length and also having the most ease in styling when I was doing that. I actually had a lot of breakage as a result of that. Since I went down to eight to 10 weeks, I haven't had any issues. This is because I know the rate at which my hair grows. By eight to 10 weeks, I have around an inch of new growth. That's because my hair grows rapidly. Other people, they may only have a half inch at that point in time. Generally, there's a average length that hair is said to grow every month, but what can the average really be when everybody is so different? Our diets, our climates, there are so many factors at play that can indicate whether your hair grows faster or not. And also, in my experience, I've noticed some parts of my hair at that point are an inch, other parts are near two inches. Other parts may be slightly under that inch, so like maybe 0.8 of an inch. It just depends on your hair, diet, lifestyle, where you live. There are just so many factors, and even something like the season can indicate whether your hair is growing quicker or not. So based on that is when you need to calculate the most optimal time for you to touch up your hair. And this also plays into how you wear your hair. For those people who don't wear their hair often and 
they are typically styling with wigs or braids or things like that their hair just so happens to be relaxed or whatever they may choose to touch up less often so they may go three to six months which is something like 16 to i want to say half a year so something like 16 to 24 weeks something in that range they can do that because they're not touching their hair very often they're not manipulating their hair very often i wear my hair every single day and that's why i touch it up more often i also follow other youtubers hair content creators who also touch up as often as i do and i've noticed that they also wear their hair down so i feel like whether you wear your hair or not is a huge factor as well if you don't wear your hair very often and you typically protective style you will not need to touch up as often as somebody like me or one of my favorite youtubers miss dolce don who wears our hair down very often so we touch up generally every two months or so i want to get into the fifth and final step less is more less everything is more i am a maximalist when i started my healthy hair journey over a decade ago i was definitely a huge product junkie but over time i've come to understand that it's more important to prioritize the things that work for you if you've watched my skincare video i mentioned that even though it may seem like i have a lot of products they either have the same ingredients or the same function when your hair is dry then you need moisturizing products when your hair is damaged you need strengthening products you don't need a million strengthening products but you need effective ones less is more here means do less for your hair routine do less for your hair in general but do the most valuable things and you will see the best results so for me instead of manipulating my hair every single day and moisturizing and sealing and this and that and the other i prioritize having a wonderful wash day once a week and from there determining what to do on the other days so generally on wash days when i focus all my effort i take my time and wash my hair two to three times i wash with an anti-dandruff shampoo because i have scalp flakiness i wash with a moisturizing shampoo because i don't want my scalp or my hair to be dry then i deep condition with one or two deep conditioners one more focused on my scalp care so always a moisturizing one one more focused on my general treated hair care so one with more protein and more of a damage or strengthening focus and then from there is when i style my hair and generally i use low to no heat um i have been blow drying my hair more often lately but i never use heat on a blow dryer i always have it set to the lowest heat setting and i always let my hair dry as long as possible in my microfiber towel before i go in and blow dry my hair sometimes i use a brush that's generally when i have more new growth but for example when i washed my hair yesterday i just used the blow dryer on my hair in general making sure i didn't have any more damp spots and when my hair was pretty much 95 percent dry that's when i tied my scarf around my edges i put on my bonnet and i went to sleep when i'm heat styling my hair i obviously use heat protective products I wanted to try one because a more expensive serum that I have is almost completely used up. When you purchase products, when you add something to your routine, it should be adding value. And if you can, get a sample size, get a trial size, or get a more affordable option with great reviews. Every single night, I put on my bonnet or I tie my hair on my scarf and I sleep on my satin pillowcase. This is so that my hair retains the moisture that it already has. I don't have to moisturize my hair throughout the week. If there's anything I might do throughout the week, I might add my satin hair rollers. And that's another thing. I use satin hair rollers. You can use satin or silicone any sort of roller that's not going to take moisture out of your hair so if it's a foam roller and it's not coated in satin you shouldn't be using it i do not comb my hair every single day when my hair is straightened i wrap it i'm using a wide tooth or a paddle brush with the coated tips to wrap my hair once a day i'm not brushing it every few minutes and if i do notice a few tangles i'll either run my hands through them or maybe use my little travel wet brush because the bristles are very wide on that 
I don't do that very often. In general, I'm not brushing my hair every single day because if my hair is curled, I'm just putting it back in, in the rollers. I'm not brushing it into wash day. So then I know less is more means when it's wash day, I don't just hop in the shower and that's it. I detangle my hair because I didn't detangle it the rest of the week and then I can do my shower routine. Once the point comes where you cannot properly deal with the two different textures, you don't want to let your hair get damaged, you may want to consider touching it up then. So for those of you who do like to stretch how often you process your hair, if you notice that it's just too tangled, it's too many things going on, your personal life is becoming impacted by your hair routine, you may want to consider shortening your stretch that time. If you're not manipulating your hair like crazy on a regular basis, you won't have to trim it like crazy. If you're not using a bunch of chemicals on your hair, so that is a Japanese straight perm plus bleaching plus highlighting plus whatever, then you won't have to trim it as much. There's just so many factors that can be simplified if you simplify how you take care of your hair. Okay, here's a quick recap. First step is to research. Research as much as possible about whatever process that you choose to do to your hair, whether you choose to do the Japanese straight for yourself or go to a professional, you need to know exactly what you're doing and if it's a trustworthy process. Second, you need to assess your hair in its current state and set a goal for the future. Obviously, you want a realistic goal and that needs to be based on you knowing what your hair is like, what it needs, and how to achieve that. Third step, know how to deal with your new growth and also how to deal with your treated hair. It's important to be able to maintain a proper state of both if your goal is to grow your hair and retain healthy, optimal hair. Your fourth step is have a retouch routine. This is obviously very personal and it depends on how often you wear your hair on a daily basis, what your preferred way of styling your hair is. Ideally, you should have a routine that works for you and your lifestyle and your hair goals. And lastly, know that less is more. You don't need all the newest products. You just need a good set of routines in order to be able to maintain your hair in your desired way. You flat on your hair every week. You need to get into the habit of being able to properly wrap your hair so that you can just unwrap it and style it. If you want to do more low manipulation hairstyles, you need to know the easiest way to achieve those hairstyles, whether that's having a good air dry routine or blow dry routine. You just need what works for you and to eliminate anything unnecessary. I live by these tips because they are universal. It doesn't matter whether your hair is relaxed, Japanese hair straightened, natural, bleached. You can definitely use all these hair tips in order to see what it is that you want to do. Even if your hair was locked, you would need to have a good idea of when it is you need to re- twist or restyle your new growth so it doesn't matter what state or status your hair is in at the moment these are very helpful and functional simple hair tips i have a whole playlist on my japanese hair straightening related videos and you can also feel free to leave a comment down below and if it's necessary i'll just create a future video addressing your specific question or concern but feel free to Leave any questions or suggestions, tips or tricks that you've had concerning your own hair journey. I always love watching people's hair advice and seeing how I can apply it or how I already am applying it to my life. It helps to positively reinforce the good habits we have and sometimes it can help us to break any unnecessary habits that are developing. So I want to thank you once again for watching today's video. Thank you to everybody for all your support. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and take care.